everyone and welcome to another one of RC Street Shop's instructional videos. Today, we'll be talking about the Traxxas Slash. Okay, so, uh, what we're doing here is, we're talking about, uh, not essential hoppins for the Slash, but we're going to talk about your best bang for your buck when Slash mods. So I say a budget here, uh, we want to talk about the... What's the best way you can improve your slash for about a hundred dollars, give or take five or ten bucks? Um, there's so many hop-ups out there for the slash that it it doesn't take a genius or even someone particularly knowledgeable to make a crazy good slash uh, if you just throw tons of money at it. What it does take a little bit of thinking to do is how to build a good slash without spending a ton of money. Um, there's an endless number of hop-ups on the Slash. You literally, and we've had customers do this, you can build a Slash with no Traxxas components on it whatsoever. Chassis, gearbox, arms, wheels, tires, body, nothing from Traxxas. It's expensive, it's probably around 1100 bucks, but you can do it. And it's a badass car, but still, you know, anyone can make something great, you just throw a ton of money at it. What well, our object here is to give you the most bang for your buck, the most value, let your dollar carry you, as far as it can, as far as performance goes. We probably sell slashes three to one over everything else. Uh, most people who come in have a slash. Everyone who comes in has at least owned a two-wheel drive slash at one point in their RC life. Um, so it is got to be the most popular truck out there as far as remote control is concerned, RTRs. It created a whole new uh, genre of trucks. Before the slash was out there, you know, short course didn't exist. It was stadium truck, so it's a pretty, not revolutionary, but it, it is a, a noteworthy piece of RC history, and there's a reason it's so popular. It's a very, very good truck, but like any RTR, it has some serious shortcomings. So, uh, the most glaring shortcoming to me, in my opinion, on the Slash is the handling. The handling on the Slash is atrocious. Um, it's just, it's too high up, it rolls way too easily. If you put a decent tire on it, forget about it. There's no way that thing's gonna go around a turn. You're better off leasing a, a bad tire on it with the stock tires and letting it slide, if it'll even slide before it rolls. Um, and then there's a few other shortcuts, but we'll get into that. So let's talk about your best, the best way to spend a hundred bucks on your slash, uh, on your stock slash. Well, on any slash for that matter. And this is just my opinion. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of people coming in and out of here. We get a lot of feedback. We've done a lot of these mods ourselves. So I'd like to think that we have a, a you know, our, our, our opinion here is pretty valuable. So let's jump into it. So there's so many ways you can go with the Slash. Uh, it was hard to kind of fit it all in for a hundred bucks. And I guess that's the challenge here. So I've got two different ways that I went with this. Um, one it leans a little bit more towards durability. The other one leans a little bit more towards performance. Uh, well, performance and durability. So, for the first uh, way to go, I would recommend doing the low CG chassis kit. It's Traxxas 5830. I would recommend doing the aluminum shock caps. That's 3767A. Or B, the, the 3767A is blue. Uh, there's a few other colors too, and the prefix at the end will change depending on the color. Then I would recommend doing RPM rear uprights, caster blocks, steering knuckles, and front and rear arms. That whole setup will run right around 100 bucks, give or take five or 10 bucks, depending on where you buy it. If you buy it from RC Street Shop, which you should, you're looking at about $105. The other way we were mentioning going was the low center of gravity chassis, the aluminum shock caps, and a Protec servo. And why I chose these two different ways, we'll get into in a second. So let's jump into the individual parts and why they're important. Uh, the low CG kit, uh, many of you have done this before. For those of you who haven't, it's a $40 upgrade and it's going to completely transform the way your slash drives. There is no comparison to way, the way a two-wheel drive slash drives before and after you put the low CG kit in it. It uh, completely, I mean, it's got to drop the center of gravity at least an inch. Uh, the truck is now going to be somewhat track worthy. Uh, it's balanced better. I mean, there's nothing, there's really no downside to it. It's the only downside to the low CG kit is you lose some ground clearance. But unless you're rock crawling and you shouldn't be with a two-wheel drive slash, 
that lost ground clearance is going to mean nothing. I mean, it, you may slap the chassis a little bit more, but the chassis slap's not that big of a deal. It can handle it. It's a Traxxas product. The thing is durable, and it's not that much work to change it over. Two-wheel drive cars are kind of modular. You've got a front and a rear. They all bolt onto the chassis. It doesn't take that long to do it. I highly recommend doing this because, it will, like I said before, it will completely transform the way your truck drives. Next is the shock caps. Now, the aluminum shock caps, I would prefer you change the shocks out completely just because the traction shocks are junk. A lot of you know that. Uh, but the shock caps are a good band-aid and they're better value than buying new shocks because the shock caps are around 15 bucks and for that price it pretty much eliminates the biggest problem you have with the shocks other than them being weak which is the caps blowing off. It's not uncommon for you to jump a slash or any two wheel drive traction car for that matter land it funny or even land it right and the shock cap blows off. Once the shock cap blows off it screws the threads up on the shock body and the shock cap's never going to stay on right. Once you have the shock caps on there, uh, it increases the durability of the shock significantly. It won't keep you from bending shock shafts or anything like that, but it will keep you from blowing shock caps off, which I think is really the biggest letdown of the tracks of shocks is they just, you know, they, they hydrolock a little bit and they boom, they pop the shock caps off and then your shock is junk. Every time you put some, you know, you can, you can put the cap back on it, but I guarantee you that same one's going to blow and it's going to take less effort for it to pop off. So shock caps, Definitely a must-do uh, on a budget build like this. Next in line is the RPM suspension stuff. RPM is a huge seller in our shop. We stand behind RPM 100%. Uh, doing aluminum parts, in my opinion, is a waste of money. It's not smart. Uh, aluminum tends to break other stuff that it's connected to. And it really has... It doesn't have a place on an RC car, with the exception of a few things here and there. Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have aluminum chassis and things like that, but, you know... For like, aluminum arms, big no-no. Uh, aluminum shock towers, big no-no on a slash. You're just going to bend them and thrash them. Uh, there's lots of aluminum stuff. Aluminum gearbox housings. We haven't run into an aluminum gearbox housing that isn't garbage. Uh, when you use aluminum in the wrong spot, it does more harm than it does good. And when you hit something hard enough to bend the aluminum, now you're out your $40 set of aluminum arms or whatever it may be. So anything that's in a spot that, that's impact related, unless it's at the base of the impact. Like, I'm not against having aluminum bulkheads on a two-wheel drive car. Those are fine. Because that's the base of the impact, so when you hit something, the impact energy goes through the arm into the bulkhead, and it's, it stops at the bulkhead. As opposed to having an aluminum arm, where it transfers all that energy into the bulkhead and can break the bulkhead in a simple crash, which might have just broken an arm or a steering knuckle. So, RPM, nylon infused plastic, super durable. It has a lifetime warranty on it. Uh, you can't beat it, and it's inexpensive. I mean, you can get arms and knuckles, they're roughly about $10 a pair. So, you can't beat that. So, if you do all the RPM suspension upgrades we have here, the knuckles and the, uh, and the chassis, you have a car that is significantly toughable, it's going to board on unbreakable, and it's going to corner and perform so much better than your original Slash. So, moving on to step two, the chassis and the shock caps are the same. The thing I couldn't decide on was, you know, changing all of the RPM suspension stuff is great, but you still have that stock servo in there. The stock Traxxas servo has been a thorn in my side for a long time. We get a lot of customers that come in, oh, my car won't steer straight, or oh, my car won't steer at all, or my car is making this crunching noise when I turn the wheels, and it's always related to the stock Traxxas servos. And they've gotten worse as time has gone on. I mean, four years ago, they were at least reliable the way they would last forever if you didn't break them. Now, we have Traxxas servos failing constantly. So it makes sense to upgrade the servo as a preemptive measure. Uh, the Protec line of servos are fantastic. Uh, we've just started carrying Protec about six months ago, and I cannot be happier with their quality and the value. The 100T has uh, over 200 ounce inches of torque on 6 volts, and the speed on it is 0.14. It is uh, a little faster than the stock Traxxas servo and considerably stronger as far as torque. So that is a huge improvement, and if you do the servo along with the chassis, uh, it completely, even I keep saying completely transforms the way the car drives, but you know, once you change the servo out, it gets something that's a little bit stronger and a bit faster. Uh, the car feels more responsive. I mean, it, you won't believe it's still a slash. It, it drives more like a competition truck. So 
you know, ideally, uh, I know we're saying 100 bucks, but if you can do all of this together, uh, you have yourself a pretty solid little truck. And these upgrades go for either a brushed or a brushless truck. Um, brushless trucks have a slightly better steering system on them, but they still could use a servo upgrade. Um, either way, uh, I hope this was informative for you. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. And if you want to buy any of this stuff, well, where could you do that? RC Street Shop, 5521 East Spring Street, Long Beach, California, 90808. If you want to give us a call and ask us about ordering these upgrades or just ask us about the upgrade process here, uh, give us a call, 562-425-9000. If you want to comment, if you want to follow more videos, I suggest you subscribe to the channel. we got a lot of good videos coming up. And you can check us out on social media. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. You're on, we're on YouTube, which you're watching us right now. You can't miss us. We're everywhere. Check us out online. We do videos on the store from time to time to update what we have in stock and things like that. And we will see you next time.